<laughs> yep, that just happened. Oh, it's five o'clock in the morning. And it's just getting worse. It's flooding, it's leaking. Look at that. It's a puddle. There was a puddle there a second ago. Oh. Welcome to camping with Tony. In the rain. In the lockdown. Oof. But I'm just behind my house in the woods. I'm here with you know who? Brucey? Hey Bruce. So looking for our camp spot. And I think I know where it is. It's this little ledge here. Been here before in a tent, like a hot tent, but this time, this time, I'm actually going to hammock camp. I hope. I got two trees here that seem wide enough apart. So I've got to get that set up. I'm using all stock stuff for this hammock. No extras. So let's see how this goes. I'll come back to you when I've got the big camera set up. Okay, everyone, I found my spot. So I've got to get my tent up, uh, tent up, get my tarp up quickly. It is raining and everything's getting wet. So, Brucey, what are you doing? What was that? Oh, you've got a pine cone. So I've got all new gear with me for my shelter. Bit of a first. I'm using gear by Amok. Yeah. And yes, this is a hammock camp, but with a difference. It's using the Amok hammock. And the Amok Skjold 10 Multi Tarp. This is the uh, for the drama. And my hammock is the drama. And this is the tarp. So, never set this stuff up. And this time what I wanted to do was, instead of having to bring extra things, I want to see if I can do this without having to use anything extra of my own. In other words, just buy what it comes with, set it up, and use it like that. Hopefully that works. Okay, so it's all color coded. So we've got a green carabiner and a red carabiner. Okay. And according to the instructions, uh, it goes uh, side, the ridge line goes through the side. Okay. It doesn't actually say whether it's Green is meant to go on the left or the right. I'm assuming that's uh, to align up with the actual hammock. So what I might do is just check what it says on the hammock because the hammock actually says port starboard on it. It's making a bit more sense now that it's actually open. Got to bring my backpack in underneath. It's going to be getting wet. With guy lines, as far as I really as I'm concerned, you want them as long as possible. It's quite soft ground here.
see the cows moving. They're hungry. looking oh yeah we've got a top all right we're getting there last one to do We're set up. I mean, I'd <laughs> ideally, I'd like the front lifted up more, but it's quite soft ground. Okay, I think that will have to do but there is lots of room under here let's bring you in okay let's see well I can stand up in here yeah Bruce you're banging onto my paracord you see this is the problem if Bruce is Bruce isn't, isn't paracord aware. No. Right. Let's get this set up. Okay, so I've got two tree straps. Now I'm used to putting a tarp, uh, a normal hammock up. But this is going to be a bit of a mystery. So what is this one? buckle through loop okay so you always start with the tree strap I'm assuming it doesn't care which one goes where because all the straps should be the same yeah it's not color coded on this one okay so let's go for it so pull buckle through the loop and then tighten okay so that's the loop and then you thread this end through and then tighten it and then the hammock itself oh what you do is just put the thing through it okay so let's start with the starboard side first okay how high up do I want to go I don't know. This is different to a normal hammock. Very different. Uh, okay. So quite simply. Pull the buckle through the loop. Like so. Okay. And then make sure it comes off a straight line. Yep. Okay. And then this buckle here is what attaches to one end. And I do the same on this end as well. Thank 
so like upside down, put it the other way around. Come looking to me for an instructional video, for God's sake. to the end. Like so. Okay, no stress on it. Okay, that's under the tarp. Right. So I've got two buckles set up. Port starboard. I've got Port. Okay, so I've got starboard buckle here. It says starboard on it. So all you do is you hook this buckle through it, like so. Apparently. So why is mine all the wrong way around? Or I got that upside down? Nope, it's the right way up. No, I agree, Bruce. This is a pain, isn't it? Tent is a lot easier. Oh, I see. Okay. And then you'll be able to cinch it, I guess. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, that's just pulled the whole buckle out. That doesn't work, does it? Why has that happened? What am I doing wrong? Ah, it is meant to be this way. It seems to me like that's going to be twisted. All right, let's try it that way now. This, it's important that the buckle is under the tarp. Very important, or else you're gonna get wet. Ooh, feet things. Ah, there's a ridge line of something, some sort. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. And then the other buckle, okay, wow. Where the funk it? Okay, I need to loosen this end a bit. And then tighten this end. Okay, how tight do you need it? No idea how tight you're gonna make this. I've got equal distance. Now these are for the foot box, I think. Oh no, these might be for the head end. No, they're for the foot box. I've got two posts here. I'm assuming we'll go in somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go. One. Now, I think you buy these extra. I bought this extra, these posts. But you can just use sticks. All right, now, this might not look like much, but what happens is you put a special sleeping pad inside this. 
this sleeping pad to be precise. The Fuel LW winter light in this case. Which apparently you can blow up with just seven breaths, I think it said. So let's put that to the test. What's this? Is this an inflator? That is an inflator. Yeah. So I might just try blowing it up. There is no harm in blowing up sleeping pads in this, these conditions, it's fine. Just depends how quickly I can do it. Okay, wherever I read that it was seven breaths, yeah, that's, that's not right. <laughs> Could be there all day. Let's use the inflatable bag. So I've got that. So what we do now is the inflator end. Shove this in the zip here. And this is where the magic happens. Squeeze. Oh, so that's a really tight squeeze. You definitely don't want to overinflate it putting it in. And then you zip it up. There, pops your uncle. I don't know how thick it needs to be. Okay, so do I <laughs> do I trust this? Oh, that might be why it didn't go in properly because I haven't got this bit folded over. There, that's why. Just a stupid move. That was all from me. All right. I think we've got to give this a go, see what happens. Does anyone know if there's an elegant way to get in this? Whoa, no, there isn't. <laughs> this is gonna need some practice. I've got to work out how to get in this. Oh, I tell you what, first things first, I'm gonna take my rain gear off. carabiners to tie stuff off hey ho oh, I see the straps getting wet already I need to uh, tighten this one a bit it's getting wet there you go tight you know why it's got loose it's got loose because of Bruce over here not not this one because he's so naughty <laughs> it's not right it's not a lot of, i tell you what there's not a lot of room oh see yeah tripped over a flipping thing myself already i can't see these guy lines at all they just blend in <sighs> okay Alright, 
I've got to give first impressions and stuff. First impressions. Not much room. Yeah, not much room. I mean, there's plenty of room in here, but I'm just, I don't know. It feels a bit claustrophobic. Now you're meant to be able to turn this into a seat somehow. Maybe I need to do that. How do you turn it into a seat? Oh, must be like that. Okay, that might work. Ah, yes. All right, I don't know if you can all make that out. If I set this up too high, if I set it up too high, I think I might have done, you know? I think I might need to loosen this off just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oops. <laughs> okay, well that's a lot, but that actually might work. It's got pockets and everything. I mean, it's got all sorts of stuff. There's a bug net here. I won't be needing that today. Do I try and sit in it like this or am I going to go flying again? I'm going to try for it. Okay, I'm in. Oh, Christ, what was that? Something just went chunk. Well, I'll tell you what. I know, this is bizarre, isn't it? Uh, if I lift it up this end just a bit, try that again it is very slippery material I don't like the noises it's making oh. okay yeah I'm getting there I'm getting there people Sure you're not meant to be able to loosen this ridge line. No. It's just so slippery the material. Very slippery. How are you meant to stay in here? I'm sliding all over the place. And then my lovely. I know. And Bruce is at my feet. He's never seen this before, so he probably freaked out by it. But he's enjoying landing under the tarp, which is a first. He doesn't usually like that. Oh, this ridge line is going to garrot me. All right, <laughs> I'm in. You can't see Brucey, but he's actually lying right underneath me. He was very happy. <sighs> Cheers, everybody. Shout out to everyone in New Zealand during this lockdown. Hope you're getting through it. Uh, staying sane. Not letting it get to you too much. Cheers everyone. Stay strong. Oh, that's so good. That's a behemoth. Something hazy, hazy IPA. And it's beer. Very citrusy. So, I don't trust this water bottle holder thing here at all. It's not designed for beers. So I haven't got a beer holder. So already I'm compromising. My chair, if you've seen my chair before, I just plonk this in the side. This doesn't have that. It's got water holders, but I wouldn't trust it with a can. It's going to spill everywhere. What do you do if you need to adjust yourself? Just position. I think this is a phone, mobile phone holder here. It's got a tab on it. Let's have a look. Oh, 
quick quick plug for my AB Outdoors and Camping merch, my, my phone cover. Right, let's see if this goes in. Uh, I'd say it's tricky. Come on. Oh yeah, okay, that's in. No problem. Don't know what that's for. Some other pocket. It's probably raining now. Uh, yes. I, I guess. I guess you're going to put water bottles in somewhere. I guess you could put them in these little side pockets. I just dread it. I think it's going to fall out. Let me try it. Oh no, it stayed. Okay. Oh. I'm getting hot now. Okay. All right, that's... All right, not so bad. Okay, that's comfy. I'll grant you that is comfortable. So, the Amok Hammock. Look at the drama. Meant to be the most comfortable hammock in the world. Well, as a chair, yep, as a chair, it's very comfortable. Yeah. Very well made. Impressed with the quality, the stitching, everything. It's beautifully made. Beautifully made. The ridge line is, is awesome as well. Um, the tarp is not seam sealed. Now they do warn you in the factory it's not seam sealed. They use some special stitching and it shouldn't leak unless it's extreme weather. We will see. I've brought some seam sealer with me just in case. But so far it seems fine. So fingers crossed that's going to be okay. Um, you can just see out the bottom. You can you can see out the sides. So you can see out. I guess I'm in an elevated position. I, I guess I've got a lot to look at. Especially up at the sides. I don't know. I guess it's alright. It, I, I don't know about using this in the snow. I mean, snow gets in everywhere. You would have to lower the whole tarp down considerably if you were going to use this in the snow yeah um, even driving rain if it was coming from the side I'd have to lower it down a bit I think I've given my, myself space to move around in here I hate you know feeling claustrophobic plenty of light coming in through the top it's okay it's a it's a nice setup I think I judged it a little bit too early there. Saying all that, though, I still miss my chair. You know why? I can move the chair. I can change direction. I can look behind me instead. I can't do that in this. That's it, you are fixed, locked, locked in. Now, interestingly, it doesn't swing like a normal hammock. I'm not swinging at all. You sit in a normal hammock and you're swinging like a rocking chair, like an armchair. This isn't swinging. Very strange. I don't know why that is. Maybe someone's going to explain that. Um, how to hang. Oh, okay, 30 degree angle. So, yeah, like that. And that's pretty much what I've got. Yeah. Those straps are getting very wet. This one in particular is soaked through. Well, we'll see if it holds. It doesn't leak. Not that I think I'd get wet anyway. This material looks kind of waterproof. So the question is, what's it going to be like when it's all zipped up? don't know. Uh, i tell you what, I am still too low on this side. I 
can just sense myself leaning that way. So I need to fix that. But I've got to have my beer first. Wow. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a glugger of the first one. I really glug it. I've only got two with me. Yeah. Maybe shouldn't have drunk this one quite so quickly. Oh, so I haven't unpacked anything. All right, so here's the other thing. When you, uh, when you have a tent and a tarp, like I usually do, believe it or not, you've actually got more space. Because you can just throw everything in the bottom of the tarp, everything in the bottom of the tent. When you're hammock camping, there's no room to put anything anywhere. Especially if the floor is wet, like this is, it's soaked. Um, so there's no room. You can't put anything in here. What are you gonna put in here? Bits and bobs. So you gotta keep everything in your backpack. And I've got a lot in my pack, especially because I've got Brucey here as well. Oh, he's behind me. All right, so Bruce is over in the bushes. I don't know if you can see him. He's, he's over here. Yeah. Maybe you saw him run off, I didn't notice. Yeah, so that's a downside of hammock camping, yeah? Is um, there really isn't anywhere to put your stuff. Uh, it's not ideal. Tent is, is much better. The only thing is, with hammock camping, all you need is a couple of trees as I just showed you. Whereas a tent, you've got to have flat ground. There's nothing worse than trying to sleep in a tent on rough, uneven ground. It's the worst night's sleep you'll ever have. That went a little bit too easily. I've got to save one for dinner. Ooh. But I have, oh, this, 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 this is gonna get on my nerves. The ridge line. I don't like the ridge line. It's at the exact, what is that? Is this meant to be here? Am I just too tall? Honestly, that, ow. That's, hello Brucey. That's pretty uncompromising. I don't see how you can uh, avoid that. That ridge line. Is it adjustable? I don't know. I don't think it is. No, it's not adjustable. I don't know if you can order it as an adjustable option or not. But that's not. It doesn't feel adjustable. Oh, maybe someone can correct me on that. I don't know. I don't know enough about hammocks. That's getting on my nerves, I'll be honest. I hate ridge lines. I really do. Especially when it's that irritating. That's pushed right up against my head. I keep catching it. Oh, stop complaining. No, I must complain. I've got to criti it's constructive criticism for anyone that wants to buy one of these. Um, I, I won't make a recommendation on this until I've spent the night in it, done my cooking here. Gosh, how am I going to do that? I might have to lower this. The trouble is, the bottom of this then drags on the floor. It's wet. That doesn't make any sense. So you've got to lift it up so it can't touch the floor, but then you're too high. All right, let me lift it up because that is touching the floor and I don't want it to actually get wet. I do miss my chair. Right. I'll tell you what, getting in this thing is a pain as well. <laughs> oh, it's literally a leap of faith. Okay, it's not t quite touching the floor now. Oh, 
Oh, now I'm rocking. Maybe it's because I was grounding out before. That must be it. Um, yeah. Let me just contemplate this for a minute. It's just taking up too much space. I feel like I want to fold it up and move it out of the way. But then I've got nothing to sit on. I need my camp chair. I really do. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put all my wet weather gear on. I really wanted this to work as a chair, but it's, it's not, it's just too much, it's taking up too much room. I'm going to go and get my camp chair. I'm not going to enjoy this. I, it's just in the way, constantly. Because of the bed. Because of this thing. I feel like I need to just pull it up and get it out of the way. Yeah. I wonder if I can hook this over the ridge line and just get it out of the way. You can see where it's been dragging on the floor. Oh, I was so desperate to like this setup. I really was. But it's just so huge. And this tarp is so tiny for it. What were they thinking? Okay, so maybe I'll just tighten this now. Put it right up the top here. Get it out of the way. Still in the way, look at that. It's just massive. Even if I've got my camp chair here, this thing's taking up so much room. Yeah. yeah, it's a big old thing. A normal hammock would just come lengthways and you can actually twist it up and get it out of the way, no problem at all. Sit right in front of it. Also, I'm gonna come back with some paracord because this just isn't working out for me. Well, I guess that proves the point. If you're willing, you see, here's the thing. I, I like to sit out. I like to sit, I like to chat to the camera. I'm gonna cook on my Tranja. I'm not gonna have a campfire. I like to do all these things. I like to have the space to do it in. Uh, there's, there's just no space here to do this with this setup. If you're just by yourself, you're not filming, you're not cooking anything, and you're quite happy just sitting in the chair like that, then fine. But this takes up a lot of space. So I need to go and get my camp chair, I need to go and get some paracord, I need to lift this up. So I've got to walk back, it might take me a couple of minutes, five minutes to get back. I'll come back and uh, show you what I'm going to do. Alright, I'm back. I am back and I've brought some paracord with me. <laughs> now that's the right colour for paracord. So I get it in a bundle of a uh, thousand feet, a thousand foot spool. So I'm going to sort this tarp out. Two on the inside, one on the out. Okay. I'll hold. Yep. Later I'll get my lighter out and just singe that. Okay, so we'll get to see sort of what I'm angling at here is lifting it right up like that. Yeah? Okay. Right. How's that looking? Much better. Now, now I can tighten the corners off. Okay. And then once I've got my chair set up here, we're laughing. Yeah, the advantage of camping near the house 
<laughs> so I can just pop back and get everything I need. And you look so comfy. I can get your bed out in a minute. Yeah, so obviously Bruce can't stay in the, the uh, hammock with me. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do... <laughs> I've got his bed. Well, I've got his, his dog bed. His one tigress dog bed. And I've got his uh, sleeping bag. Now, it's not that cold at all. Um, if it was really, really cold, I wouldn't do this. Not for me, but because of Bruce. I wouldn't have him lying outside in the freezing cold at night, all night. Wouldn't be good for him. He wouldn't complain, but it just wouldn't be right. And I'd be worried and sick about him all the time. So, if it was freezing cold and really windy, I would not do hammock, I would do tent, just because I've got Bruce with me. Okay. You know my chair, Brucey, don't you? Hey? You've sat in my chair before. Well, I wasn't looking. I'm desperate to sit down on this. And I've brought the uh, bigger one with me this time. Not that new small one that's just for when I want to sit in a tent. Because <laughs> that was so low it was difficult to get out of. Alright. Oh, Brucey, you're not going to let me in, are you? You're not going to share. Can you move up just a little bit, Brucey? Just mind out, mind out. Good boy. Just a little bit. Just let me... Oh, look, there's a pine cone. Oops, there's my phone. Go get the pine cone. Go get the pine cone. Oh man, that was a lot of faff and hassle, wasn't it, Bruce? Oh. I need to take these off now. Calm yourself. Rain pants. Oh my god, my phone just keeps falling out of my pocket. Whoops, sorry, Brucey. I'm sorry, Bruce. We will be sitting down normally any second. Oh, that's what we wanted. That's better. That's so much better. Oh, I feel liberated. The hammock's out of the way. Yeah. Oh, I feel so much better. That's up here nicely. The back is still all the way down, but that's okay. Every, the angle of this slope is down that way, so everything is going down that way. Uh, but when you're in a hammock, it doesn't matter anyway. One paracord. That was it. Just this one cord here. And my chair has made all the difference in the world. Wow. Amazing. That's all it took. He's dry, I'm dry, I'm warm. I could have a fire now if I wanted. But it's not, it's not cold enough to have a fire. Also, we're in lockdown. And I'll be honest, I don't think it's the most sensible thing to do. Having fires in the bush, well this is not the bush, this is the forest, uh, in lockdown. You know, even though I'm just behind the house, 
it's just not what you're meant to do. It's not. It's against the spirit of of the regulations. Oh, that was. You know what? It's incredible. I've been doing this a long time, and I know what I like. I know how much space I want. I know the view I want to look at. And I know how comfortable I want to be. And when it doesn't feel right, it just puts me off completely, off the trip. You shouldn't have to compromise. You just shouldn't. Um, if you were bushcrafting, so if you were making stuff, you would make it so that you'd, you'd be happy. But when you, you buy stuff, it's their way or the highway. If you rely on their equipment, it's their way or the highway. So you can adapt their equipment to suit your needs. And that's what I did with one piece of paracord and my chair. Now I've got, now I, I view this tarp completely differently. I'm positive about this tarp. Uh, it's letting in a good amount of light. It's kind of cool, funky camo color. I've got room, I can see all around perfectly. I've got my chair, I'm comfy, familiar. I know it works. I've got my beer holder on the side. Whoa! It's my beer holder that I was talking about. Familiarity. I've got my dog by my side. I could put, I'm going to put his bed out soon. I'll dry him off a bit and put his bed up. But he will just keep going out and getting soaked. Well, maybe he won't. Maybe he'll just lie here on his bed. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm having a good time. That just didn't seem right. It seemed claustrophobic. Um, because this, is t this takes up so much space. Because you've got that bed. The air bed. It takes up a huge amount of space. Honestly, I just don't want to see this thing unless I'm going to bed. I don't want to use that as a chair. It's very comfortable to lean back, but you can't really do anything. You can't reach the floor. Cooking from sitting in that, it would be very awkward. Very awkward. Yeah. I feel like I'm constantly going to slide out the thing. Now I'm happy. Amazing. What a difference. I like the uh, tarp setup though. I do like the fact that you've got the carabiners, it's all ready to go, you can tighten it. And boy, does it tighten. That's very good setup. Honestly, this is good gear. Thoroughly recommend it. Just take paracord, plenty of it, and adapt it for how you want it. Um, I mean, there's, there's another tree over in the distance there that I could even tie this one off to uh, just to get the angle a little bit higher. But there's no point. Look at it. It's perfect. It's draining the water perfectly to that corner there. I don't need to. It's all good. Yeah, I'm happy now. Very happy. Okay. Progress. Right, I'm going to unpack. Let's get that done. Oh. So someone said to me, uh, someone made a comment, oh, there's no way you keep, there's no way you're carrying in all that gear. You're just driving in every time. There's no way all that gear fits in that backpack. Okay, admittedly, I've just gone to get that huge spool of paracord and I've just brought my chair along. Okay. But the backpack has stayed there the entire time. It's had all this in it. Everything goes in my backpack. This is a 105 litre backpack. I mean, it's Bergen size, what the military would call a Bergen, okay? It is no small thing. There's nothing you can't fit in. Right, I'm gonna put my knife in the pouch here. Okay, so. 
you know what I'm talking about, that everything fits in here. Oh, beer can. Okay, shall we show them, Brucey? Because they, some people just don't believe us. All right, Gorilla Pod for filming. Food bag. Lots of food in there. Ah, my computer. I'll explain that later why I've got that with me. My Tranger cook set. Oh, you know that means food, don't you, cheeky? My one tigress table. And glove. Gloves. My chopping boards. It doesn't fit. My massive GSI saucepan and plate. My pillow. Sleeping bag. Now, if I put that in here, is it going to fall out and fall on the floor? I don't know. Good question. Let's see. Sleeping bag, pillow. What else have we got? My beanie. Oh, I put my beanie on. That's what I needed. Oh, that's better. Uh, Bruce's bed. Which is wet because this backpack leaks. His sleeping bag. You've got to keep his sleeping bag dry. Anything else? My cup. I've got all of my medical kits, cigars, <laughs> all sorts of stuff in there. Water. Now, Jean. Another water. Headlamp. Rum. Let's get another beer. Hey, hey. We got another beer, Brucey. We have. We got another beer. Okay. What else have I got in here? In the front pockets, I've got somebody's dog food for dinner. Yes, that's right. Got my fuel for the Trangia. Bruce's bowl. I'm going to give him some water. What I've got in here? Got my spatula. Got my saw, just in case. My fat wood, just in case. I tell you what. The material on this Kelty is not waterproof. It's quite irritating. This is not as good quality as my Tatonka. There's water actually seeping in. <sighs> yeah, one job to do, Kelty. Basic waterproofness would have been good. Okay, so you see all of that fitted in. And then in the top pouch, it's right through, see it's your bowl. In the top pouch, I've got just uh, camera gear, my uh, possibles pouch, my AB Outdoors possibles pouch, lighting equipment, lights, batteries, all that sort of stuff. All of which fit in this backpack. So please don't, please don't insult me by writing in, saying, or commenting, no way, you don't fit all of that in your backpack. Okay, I do. And you've just seen that I do. Right, now, can we get all of this in and over the ridge line? Let's give it a shot. Just to give me some more room. Come on, you can do this. You gonna hold? Yay! Okay. We're laughing. We're laughing. Ah, oh, my MacBook. Oh, and Bruce's towel. That's what I dry him with. My MacBook computer. Again, I'll explain that later. What that's all about. My Gorilla Pod. Because sometimes I attach to the tree and film like that. 
So, after the stress of having to explain myself yet again to the naysayers, the naysayers who have probably never gone camping a day in their lives. I'm going to treat myself to a cigar because of that. Yes, I am, Brucey. I'm going to treat myself to a cigar. Honestly, you don't want this. Whenever I have a cigar, you pop up. Oh, I've got some seam sealant. I've got my light. I've got his light, Brucey's light. Medical kit in there. Oh, I think, Brucey, I think we need to put your bed out for you, don't we? Yes, we do. Right, let's give myself some leg room. Ooh, I can put my table up. And then we can actually relax, sit down, talk to your fans. They're all your fans, Brucey. I think I've got a couple of fans, but they're mainly yours. I don't know why you're licking your lips. Honestly, it's a cigar. Right, let's put your One Tigress awesome bed out. Sleeping pad. Let's get rid of all this wet wet stuff. Look at that, it's dry underneath. It's great, isn't it? It's dry. Hey, look at that. Your one tigress bed. Oh, look at that, Brucey. Is that your bed? Hey, we'll give you some water. Oh, dog, does yours drink from the bottle before it even gets in the bowl? Are you thirsty? Mmm, is that nice water? Put that there for you, out of the way. Right, I've got a lighter in here. Yeah, you see, now I can relax a bit. Just chill out. Oh, it's quite stressful when it just doesn't feel right, honestly. It really is. It, it just you can put a dampener on the whole thing. And you know, the worst bit about it is he detects that it's not right. He detects that I'm not happy. He just knows. Hey, this is this one tigress table. It's amazing how much you can fit in that backpack, you see? I told you I brought it all with me. Now, for the uh, astute of you, this is the one that I bent. <laughs> I, I tripped over it when I was car camping. I bent the corner of it. Well, it wasn't the table's fault at all. It was my fault. But I've got to say, it's a flipping awesome table. Look at that. I do like it. It's really good. I like the fact it's got on spikes and you can dig it in. Check that bad boy out. One tigress table. Now, they sent this to me for free. I didn't buy this. Asked me, uh, oh, actually I didn't ask them at all. They just sent it to me. They said, can we send you a, a dog bed for Brucey? I said, yeah, 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 send them one. Yeah, he'll love that. And they sent me a whole bunch of stuff. Admittedly, the tent, the Cosmito tent. Yeah, that was a bit of a fail. But the table, Superb. Okay. Got my beer. This is very solid. It's got all these little hooks on to hook things onto. It's brilliant. Really good. Cigar time. Don't get excited, Bruce. It's really not what you want.
Oh, I can finally relax. Right. Oh, I love having the table here. Oh, I'm so relaxed now. It's brilliant. Brew number two. This is an Emerson's Hazed and Confused Cloudy IPA. And this is more on the uh, hoppy, this is mid, mid color, bitter flavor. Um, We'll see how fruity it is. Oh, that is bitter, but it's nice. Well, that's very nice, yeah. You see, he's settled, because I'm settled. Okay. Just relax, Bruce, it's okay. He can hear goats occasionally and it triggers him. It's all right, chill out. Oh, so much has happened. Don't know where to start. So the date is 22nd of August. New Zealand is in full lockdown, level four. No one's allowed out. How am I camping, you may ask. This is my land. I'm just behind the house. Uh, you're allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do anything that um, is high risk, which is why I'm not having a fire. Because risk, uh, fire is a risk. Even though it's chucking with rain, uh, it's still risk. There's an element of risk there. Chopping wood is risky. Using a knife to chop wood, all those sorts of things are risky. So you've got to keep the risk factor down uh, so for me, I don't actually have a garden. All I've got is this. I've got woods. Whoa. <laughs> Just got dived bomb by a bird. Um, all I've got is this. I've got woods, forest, thick bush, all that sort of stuff. Well, she said. Um... I thought to myself, ah, oh, so what should I do? Should I do some bushcraft? Well, no, there's an element of risk to bushcraft because you're chopping, you're sawing. Um, you're using a knife a lot. You're all these things. Um, so what is the least risk form of camping outdoor that you would do in your garden? You wouldn't do bushcraft in your garden. You'd pitch a tent or a hammock and you'd sleep out in it. You'd cook some good food, uh, you'd have a drink, and that's what this is. And this is lockdown reality. Uh, the irony is, um, whilst the UK, Canada, parts of the US, and Europe, and the rest of the world were locked down, uh, New Zealand, we were free. That's why I was camping all the time. 
out in some amazing places on the top of mountains. But now we're in lockdown and the rest of the world seems to be free. I think apart from Australia that's in a terrible lockdown. I feel so sorry for our cousins over there. And I actually have to raise a toast to Australia. Get through this. You will, but just get through it quickly. Um, so that's what this is about. People said, oh, I would love it if you could just do some, you know, garden camping. Well, here I am. Welcome to my garden. I'm lucky. I'm one of the very few lucky people that have access to land during lockdown and can do the thing I love, which is camping. And the longer the lockdown goes on, the more I'm gonna to have to keep doing this. But it's so quiet, it's lovely. I mean, I've got so many spaces to do things in. So much area. Uh, so I can just keep going. I can do this indefinitely, a lot of different spots. Um, so I am lucky, blessed to have this. Yeah. And blessed to have a companion to do it with. I don't see why he should suffer. I don't see why Bruce should suffer because of lockdown. So I'm very selfless. I'm doing it all for Bruce. So yeah. So lockdown happened suddenly with no real warning. Um, saying that there's a lot of conspiracies out there, but I don't do conspiracies. So Anne and I, uh, my wife, we're on a camper van, van life trip that you can see. I've got two parts to that. There's two videos out just before this one. And the plan was heading south through Queenstown, south to Glen Orkey and places like that. Just chill, enjoy Anne's birthday, have some fun, shoot quite a bit of video. Uh, Anne wanted to do that as well. Even though she didn't really want to be on camera, she thought people want, should see New Zealand, how beautiful it is. So we got the first part done, and I said, right, I'll see you in Queenstown. We arrived in Queenstown. And it chucked down. Now, we arrived in Queenstown on Anne's birthday. Um, and I thought, I'm not gonna film today because this is Anne's birthday, it's her day, it's a special day, so everything was dedicated to Anne. It chucked down, it was miserable, it was freezing. We were not motivated. So to go out to a restaurant for Anne's birthday, um, we had to put full wet gear on. All that wet gear that you just saw me wearing, we, we were in, fully made up in that, just to go to a restaurant. Ended up, Anne wanted Thai, so we went to go and get Thai and it was just honestly average. And it was like a cafe, nothing that nice about it at all. Quite a disappointment, quite a letdown. So I thought, okay, it's all right. We'll make up for it the next day. So next day, there was a press conference by the government at 1 p.m. where the prime minister of New Zealand, after banging on for probably, I don't know, what, seven, eight minutes to get to the point, finally said, uh, the whole of New Zealand's going into lockdown, the Nor uh, Auckland's going into lockdown for seven, at least seven days, and the rest of the country locked down for three days. Three days. This is very inconvenient, very annoying. Um, because three days isn't enough to make a decision what you do when you're on holiday. Do you stay and hope that you don't go into, that the lockdown is canceled after three days? Uh, we made the decision to, to go anyway. That kind of ruined it. So we then, she said, right, you've got 48 hours to get home. From wherever you are, you've got 48 hours to get back. Well, we couldn't leave by the time they made that announcement. It's such a long drive back. We had things we had to plan. So we said, well, I'll tell you what, the lockdown wasn't until midnight. So you have 48 hours from midnight. So it was going into lockdown at midnight. So we thought, well, let's go out. We went out, we had a fantastic meal. 
went to a tapas restaurant, had some beautiful food, it was lovely. We had, you know, mulled wine, mulled sangria. Um, it was a lovely evening, it was cold, but it was clear. Really good night. Uh, and then we thought what we'll do is in the morning we'll decide what we're gonna do. Do we stay or do we go? Anyway, in the end we made the decision to go because we thought, nah, this is Delta. This isn't over. It was one case. We locked down for one case. But hear me out. We locked down for one case. Today, which is four days later, we've now got 70 cases. Everyone knows it was the right decision to make. Uh, because, and here's the reason, not because I agree with lockdowns at all, but because the government screwed up so badly with the vaccination process. And I mean screwed up epically. I think we were the worst or second to worst um, vaccination rate in the OECD. It's shocking. A shame, they should, all, they should all basically resign. It, it was shocking. That's left this country totally vulnerable. So whilst we were enjoying our COVID-free lifestyle, the government made no inroads on the vaccine, minimal. Just didn't get the job done. So I the way I would describe it as uh, New Zealand did not beat COVID for 169 days. We hadn't beaten COVID. All New Zealand did was cowered in the panic room. If you've ever seen the movie Panic Room, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's what happened here. The whole country, well, government, I don't think it was the people necessarily, but cowered in the panic room. And we're oblivious to what was going on outside. And we thought we'd defeated COVID. Well, I say we, I didn't. I'd been in the UK for a lot of it. So I lived it. I had COVID. Um, I saw that you could actually live alongside COVID. And that you just had to have a plan, but New Zealand didn't have a plan. And you can blame this government. I don't care what anybody says. The buck stops with our prime minister. And um, she's caused a lot of problems. Her and her minions who are equally useless. Don't forget, these are just ministers. These aren't people that can hold down a proper job in a company without getting fired, okay? They're just elected people who are good at shaking hands and kissing babies. They don't, they're not any better than you or I. Uh, I know they're not better than me. I worked for an American investment bank most of my life. You make a mistake, you're out. You make the sorts of mistakes these guys make, you'd never work again in that industry. So they've made mistake after mistake after mistake. They've been complacent. They blame the people. Get this, the New Zealand government has blamed the people. They've said that the population of New Zealand has got complacent. Give me a break. Uh, rant over. This one anyway. Let's move on. So, this setup, I'm loving it now, but, but it could just be a tarp and a hammock behind me. So I'm happy now. Um, I can't wait to sleep in this tonight because it's meant to be the most comfortable sleep you've ever had. And I'm very excited about that. I was on a bit of a downer earlier about it, well, just because it takes up so much space. It is colossal when that bed is blown up. It's massive, it fills up everything under this top so you can't do anything else at all. And then okay, so you get it out of the way, but then where are you gonna sit? That's why you gotta have your camp chair. So even though it does double as a chair, forget the chair. If you can, take your camp chair with you. Honestly, you'll thank me for it. And if you've got a big enough backpack like I do, the Kelty 105 litre Coyote backpack, take your table. This is awesome. Look at this setup. Look at this setup. Isn't this incredible? It's a great setup. Ah, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chill. Just going to relax. Listen to the sounds of the birds and the cows. Listen to the rain. Have my beer, have my cigar. 
And I think I'll come back to you at dinner time. You've had to listen to me enough now. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> it suddenly got cold. Ah, right, dinner. I know that's what Brucey's been waiting for. And who am I not to deliver? So get the tranger all set up. Now, for this, I will be using, uh, I think I'll just be using my big frying pan. Yeah. Okay. If you've never used a transier before, it's an alcohol stove, it's the original alcohol stove. Not white gas or anything like that. I use a combination, a mixture of meths and a bit of water or even hand sanitizer, something that's got alcohol in it maybe, but um, bit of water as well. The water stops it from sooting up. Now, it is cold-ish. And it's a bit windy, which is why the Tranger works so well. Works very well in the wind. That's if you can get it lit, of course. a breeze coming straight through here. Okay, there we go. Lit. Oh, where's the wind coming from? I think that'll be okay. <sighs> oh, yeah, temperature dropped suddenly out of nowhere. I'd be quite glad to get in my sleeping bag later. Okay, so what we will need, we will need a spatula. And my GSR frying pan, which if this is level, should just sit there nicely. Yep, that's doing all right. And Bruce has gone off his bed. See how he just snuck off there when I wasn't looking? Even though I'm doing some dinner for him as well, he will be back. He's gone to... He's just doing... Bruce is doing Bruce. He's lying down under a tree. He's gone to just look out. So what he does... Can you hear the rain? 
it, it's coming in. If it was heavy rain, it would just be going straight down, but it's quite fine, so it's actually blowing straight in here. Just, yeah, top just doesn't give enough protection, it really doesn't. Okay, whatever, I'll have to deal with it. Oh, I've actually dropped a stick in there. <laughs> I thought I could smell something. What is that? Oh no, it's the rubber seal. Oh no. The rubber seal had fallen out of the tranger lid. When I lit it, it was, it was encased, it was sitting on top of the, uh, the vents. And now that's caught fire. So there's no rubber seal on there, great. Luckily I have a spare rubber seal at home. Okay, for dinner tonight we are doing ribeye, ribeye steaks. Oh yes. We are doing ribeyes. We are doing vegetables. No salad for this man, no, nope. not tonight. <laughs> I've had salad, <laughs> I've had quite a bit of salad lately. I said on one of my last videos, oh well I like salad. Because Anne had made a salad. <laughs> and someone commented, said no man ever. Oh, I can't believe the rubber seal fell off, that's... That's a bit odd. How did that come out of the lid? I don't understand how that how that came out of the tranger lid. Oh well, whatever. It's done. Don't dwell on it. Right. Okay. So, um, what do I want to do? I want to get some oil in here. Oh, it's cold. You have to excuse the headlamp, it's the only way I can see. Even though I've got my light on behind me. It's, um, it's not enough. Okay, oil in, seasoning. That's right, anyone who knows me knows I always forget the seasoning, but not this time. I have it this time. But because I'm going to be cooking some for Bruce as well. Bruce, come and, come and lie down. Go and lie down somewhere. Okay, good boy. Because I've got, I've got to cook Bruce's as well, I can't put any seasoning on his. That's right. The Bruce doesn't have seasoning. Right, I'm just chopping up my potatoes. I know you can't see that. But just take my word for it, I'm chopping up my potatoes. <laughs> yep, that just happened. That just happened. It wouldn't be camping with Tony if that didn't happen, let's be honest. Oh my word. Okay. I can't believe that just happened. Well, I can actually. Oh my word. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have some pine needles in my dinner. Worst things have happened. Oh, how did I do that? What did I do? I think I caught the handle. I always have the handle aiming away from you. Stupid. I could rinse it all, but I honestly don't care. And I know he doesn't, Bruce doesn't care. And it's just the veggies. <laughs> no great loss. I'm more miffed about losing the oil that was in there that was nice and hot. That went flying. I, it was like it was in slow motion for me as well. You probably all saw it happening and go, oh no. Okay, it just looks like it's got seasoning on there. So I don't know what just happened there. I caught the handle 
at a biz really bizarre angle there. I just caught it as I went to put it in. <sighs> should we start, um, should we do that again? <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh. <laughs> oh, you can't take all this, this all too seriously. Honestly, you can't. I'm out here in lockdown. How can I take it seriously? <sighs> did that just happen? It did just happen. All right. It's okay. It will be a little bit, um, there's some little pine needles in there. <laughs> it might be a little bit gritty. Don't worry about it. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's what I always say. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get through this together, all of us. <laughs> Don't judge, for God's sake. Unless you were here, everyone makes mistakes. At least I leave them in the video. Others are just a little bit too perfect. You know what I mean? There are people out there that do these channels, and just it's just perfect. They know who they are. And there are some that admit it when things don't quite work out right. Um, what was I watching? I was watching Corporal's Corner. Corporal's Corner. And he, uh, he <laughs> made a, um, was it a hammock? It was like a hammock out of building materials. He made a whole shelter out of building materials. So he had a Tyvek sheet and... Uh, it was one of the few ones he did actually where I saw it was raining. But yeah, he had a Tyvek sheet and he used this, um, he used the fencing, the, the plastic temporary fencing material as the, the base of the hammock. Anyway, it was too close to the fire, an awesome fire. And it melted and I think it collapsed. And he was up front about it. So, oops, whoopsie. Let's do that again. I don't think he caught it on camera when it actually collapsed. But yeah, he was up front about it. So, you know, things don't always go according to plan. We all screw up. No matter how long you've been doing this, you're gonna screw up. Do you screw up every single time? Oh, well, I seem to. Something seems to go wrong every single time. But, you know, that's just inevitable. It just happens. Oh, that smells good. Okay, so yeah, I've got, um, got some lovely ribeye. Now, you wanna hear something crazy? In this lockdown, butchers are not allowed to be open. Butchers. Seriously, butchers are not allowed to be open. I just, I, I don't know what's going on. Supermarkets can stay open. The massive chains, yeah, the huge supermarkets that, you know, make a few billion a year, they can stay open. Butchers can't. Go figure. <sighs> ah, the little guy just keeps getting beaten up. You know, non-stop. Nothing is fair. Don't know if you can make out the, uh, the rain. But also I'm under the trees, so it's just constant dripping on the tarp. Right, while that's going on now, I might just put the stakes on. Okay, so I'm gonna do half a steak for Bruce. Uh, actually, I'll do a whole one and I'll leave half of it for him in the morning. Yeah. So I'll put Bruce's on um, 
first. Just make sure there's no onion near it. Hang on. It's going all that way. Yep, that's good. Okay. Right, let's put his on. I mean, he could eat his raw. I'm sure he'd love it raw, but I'm going to cook it up a bit for him. I'll give him a nice rare steak. Gosh, that smells good. Gosh, I'm bummed about the rubber seal. That was silly. It came out of the lid. I, did, I just didn't even notice that it fell out. Yeah, it's gone. It got stuck to the inside of the ring. So there's meant to be a rubber seal in here. And that came out. I guess that's a common problem. But yeah, I have a spare, luckily. And I know, again, I'll probably get the question, why don't you just use a butane burner? You know, or can you recommend butane burners? I don't use butane anymore. I've completely gone off butane. Um, I used to swear by it. Things like jet boil and stuff like that. I used to swear by it. But they're so noisy. And it's funny, I did a full 360. I used to hate alcohol stoves. I used to say, what's the point? They're not efficient. Blah, blah, blah. But I was, I was missing the fundamental point of an alcohol stove. It's just a nice experience. It's so quiet. Works in pretty much any condition. Okay, it takes a while to light it when it's really, really cold, but once it gets going, it's fine. Oops, just lost an onion. I need to get that, make sure he doesn't get that. Um, something romantic about alcohol stove, it really is, it's lovely. And yeah, I just love the peace and quiet of it. Onion. Back in the pan. Uh, camping with Tony. I can't believe I face planted all the vegetables straight away. <laughs> oh gosh. I only had two beers. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Right, Bruce's has been on there long enough. Um. So I need to put his in his bowl with his dog food. Recognize this sound, he'll be here like a shot. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Again, for people who say, oh, you didn't give him much. This is very high protein, special food. It's not like your normal everyday dog food that you would give to your normal everyday dog that sits on the couch all day and doesn't do anything. Bruce is a working dog. I can see him just hiding over there. Okay, so I'm gonna chop some up for him. Actually, I'll let it cool down. And I'll put mine on, but I need to season mine. Now, for seasoning, all I'm going to do is put salt on. I've got some rub, but you know what? I'm gagging for just a normal steak. Untainted by barbecue whatever. Just a normal steak. Thank you. Right, I've got a bag of spinach here. That's gonna go on as well. Right, let me slice up this steak for Bruce. So he'll get, um, I'll give him half of this now. Save the other half for him. I know you can't see it. I'm chopping it up behind the, you just have to take my word for it. I'm, I'm doing it, okay? Don't judge me. It's, it's happening. And you'll see him eating anyway. So all that is for Brucey, but he's going to have to wait patiently to have his. 
He's being so good. It's yes, that's your dinner. You just have to wait. You are so wet. You're soaking. Maybe I'll let you eat now because you're so wet. It will heat you up. That, that's what I'll do. I'll let you eat now. Sit. Good boy. Go on then. Good boy. Right, let me put this light on a bit stronger. Just so I can see what I'm doing. Oh. Ooh. Good boy. <laughs> oh. Gosh, I'm, it's... It wasn't this cold earlier. Temperature's really plummeted. I'm glad I've got a sleeping bag with me and not a quilt. So yeah, I bought a sleeping bag with me because um, as much as I like using a quilt and the space that a quilt gives you to stretch out and stuff like that, that you, you feel any breeze. Don't care what anybody says. If you turn over a lot like I do, you're bound to get a little gap and it'll push a lot of heat out. They're just very inefficient quilts. Yeah. So I'm fine with using a quilt in a tent, but not, not when I'm out, not when I'm outdoors, when I'm, when I've got no wind protection. Yeah. Then I need to use a sleeping bag. Otherwise I just won't sleep. Just peace of mind knowing that, uh, there's no breeze getting in or anything like that. Yeah. So, and I've got a really good sleeping bag in there. Uh, so I've got to set all this up, you see. I've got to reinflate the mattress. Um, I wish I'd bought my pump, my electric pump now. Yeah, I've got to reinflate the mattress, set his bed up, put everything underneath here so that it doesn't get wet tonight. I could bring the tarp down more, but should be all right. This, it's going to be an interesting night. Isn't that right, Brucey? Have you finished all that? Is it all gone? Oh, it has. Yep, all gone. Do you want some water? Put some water in this bottle for him. Oh, Bruce, let's put your light on. <laughs> what have I done with his light now? I just had it. Oh, there it is. Bruce. Oh, there you are. Wait, come around. Come around. Sit. Hang on. It's your light. I know, you're wagging your tail. Why isn't it coming on? Ah, okay. There it is. Okay. Red. Here, come here, Bruce. Come here. This is so I can see you. And so everyone else can see you darting around. All right. Go for it. Off you go. Good boy. You're going to see him now, zipping back and forth with his little red light on. He can't hide now. Excellent. Okay, how are we getting on here? Looking good. Can you all smell that at home? Or wherever you're watching this? Yeah. It, I, how do you get organized with a hammock camp? You just, everything is outside. But usually with a tent, I feel like I've got a base, a wall. And I'm up against that and I can put stuff in the tent. Yeah. Just psychologically, it's just a little bit different. You're very exposed hammock camping, very exposed to the elements. You could make a windbreak 
with the tarp, but the wind is swirling all different directions here. So that's not gonna work. You could get one of those hammock tents that completely wrap and cover and everything. But then why not just have a tent? There's a reason that tents are still the biggest selling camping item in the world and that hammocks are a niche and everything else. It's just that tents work. They work. They're great shelter in any condition. Um, some are way better than others. Again, you get what you pay for. If you buy a rubbish tent, cheap rubbish tent, then um, you're probably gonna have a rubbish time if the weather's not good. Yeah. So you get what you pay for with tents. You know, could save your life. Here he is. You'll see him skulking back here again soon, I'm sure. Oh, I tell you, this meal is gonna warm me up. So, if you are cold on a camping trip, uh, just eat, eat, eat as much as you can until you're just stuffed, just honestly keep eating and your body will heat up so fast it's amazing yeah you really feel it it's just a, it starts burning because it's it, it's got to consume all that food so it's got to get hot and your body heats up really well so just eat as much as you can high really high calorie food yeah doesn't matter what it is fats proteins i tend to find that fats definitely get you hotter fat protein carbs less so don't they, I, you know carbs don't really do it for me it's mainly fats and protein which makes sense i mean if you look at um eskimos or what you call them In inuits? inuits um they're on a very high fat protein diet and they live in extreme conditions so it, it does make sense okay so the veggies are ready you know it does make sense that that's what keeps them warm they don't have carbs in their diet I don't think so anyway where would they get carbs where would is it Inuit or Eskimo are you allowed to say Eskimo anymore I don't know I'm not being woke i'm not woke at all but i just i am respectful i just want to be respectful so if it's uh let me know is it inuit or is it eskimo i, I honestly don't know don't forget we don't live in, i don't live in america i don't i'm not quite sure but um yeah you've got to show some respect Right, what I will do is, I'm so confused what I'm trying to achieve right now. Oh yeah, the steak. <laughs> ah yes, spinach. Oh, why did I cover that up? Yeah. Come here, food bag. Right, spinach. Don't burn, Pan, don't burn. Right, whole bag of spinach. Um, it, this will disappear into nothing. That's enough, I think. See? Clean. Clean pan. Okay. I am, I'm actually enjoying having that flame. Shall I leave the flame on? I think I should. Right. I am, I'm gonna let that burn right out. Okay. Steak, vegetables and spinach. Yum, yum.
Bon appétit, everybody. Now you get to listen to me eating. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's all good. I probably could have put some garlic in this as well, but it's fine without it. That is tasty. That is so good. Mm. Tell you what would make it better. Another Emerson's Hazed and Confused Cloudy IPA. Cheers, everyone. Oh, yeah. And I tell you what. Cheers to all my fellow YouTube creators out there, all the outdoor lot, the bushcrafters, the campers like me, and just everyone. Everyone who goes out there, films it, and puts it out on YouTube for everyone else to watch. It's hard work, and um, here's to all of you guys. You all do such a great job. It's what got me into it. It will get others into it. Someone made a comment once. Please don't mention your, um, please don't mention the other channels anymore. They don't mention you, so don't give them a shout out. I don't think that should be the spirit of what we're doing here. I'm, isn't it a community? The outdoor community? Camping, bushcrafting, some survival skills, aren't they all bundled into the same sort of thing as just a community of people getting outdoors, doing stuff outdoors. Some are more hardcore, some are more chilled out, some like the luxuries, um, but I'll always mention them. I like watching their channels, so why else shouldn't I? I guarantee People like Camping with Steve, Steve Wallace, and Corporal's Corner, Sean Kelly. TA Outdoors, which stands for Totally Awesome Outdoors. You know, Joe Robinette. Uh, none of them heard of me or watch my channel. They don't. But that doesn't bother me. They're busy people. They've got big channels. They've deserved their success. And um, it's nice to show some gratitude to them for entertaining us and doing such hard work. And I've got no qualms with mentioning them and giving them a shout out, honestly. Matthew Poser, for instance. I love watching Matthew Poser. I admit, I don't watch all of them all the time. Some of their videos interest me, some don't. Um, but I like the personalities, and when they do make the effort, it really shows. This is so delicious. Oh, I wish you were all here with me. We were sitting around a big campfire eating this together. One day. One day when I'm allowed to travel again, hopefully I'll call into 
different parts of the world and meet up with subscribers. And we can sit around and talk about all my greatest failures. <laughs> there are many. Uh, I've had many successes though as well. Was it Michael Jordan? I think it was Michael Jordan who said something along the lines of, and look, no, okay, I'm going to get this completely wrong, all right? It's just as an example. But Michael Jordan was asked a question about um, how many times has he won or something? And he said he doesn't count them, but he's lost this many times. He counts the losses, he doesn't count the wins. It's like when Muhammad Ali said, how many, how many sit-ups can you do? He says, I don't know. I don't start counting until I can't do anymore. I don't know where I was going with that one. <laughs> but you get one point. Hopefully you get my point. Everybody makes mistakes. It's whether you show those mistakes and learn from them and you, sh and you have enough humility to show them to everybody that you can make mistakes as well. I don't know how many camping trips I've done now. By myself, with others, uh, military camps, all sorts. Um, but there's never 100% perfect. Something happens. Always something goes wrong. You drop something or you break something. Cut yourself forget something always something goes wrong I don't believe there's anyone out there that gets it right every single time I just don't believe it things life doesn't work like that things go wrong shit happens weather changes when you didn't expect it something snaps gear failure Dog failure. Mm. This is so good. I'm getting hot already. I tell you what, I'd love to hear from everyone that has been camping before. To put in the comment their most embarrassing failure. And then, so I want to hit, in the comments, put your most embarrassing failure, but then after that, put the absolutely best time you've ever had camping. Both. And I wonder how many times it will be the same trip. It is possible to have a really embarrassing failure and have just a fantastic camping trip. You think me dropping the food on the floor made a scrap of difference to how good this trip feels, how good this meal tasted? Honestly, it made no difference. I couldn't tell. Forgetting things is my biggest problem. It doesn't matter how many times I write a list, I always forget something. Mmm, wow. I can't believe I've wolfed that down so quickly. I'm actually eyeing up Bruce's other steak here. But I can't do that to him. That's his. I've promised it to him now. I need to wrap that later. <sighs> that was delicious. <sighs> Welcome back. That dinner was excellent. But I am looking forward to the hot chocolate because it is cold. I've got Bruce's bed <laughs> on as a blanket. His, his sleeping bag. Because he's not using it. I don't know where he is. You'll probably see him run past.
Oh yeah, hot chocolate to warm the soul. It's been raining non-stop, but it's really quite light, not too heavy. Gonna have the sound of this all night, I think, on the tarp, which is, yeah, quite nice when you're comfy. There's an owl. It's not making a noise at the moment. Just behind me. It's been so loud. It's freaking Bruce out a bit. It's actually a moorpork, which is a New Zealand, small New Zealand owl. Oh, great dinner. I wish I had a fire. I really do. It just makes such a difference. It makes such a difference in physical warmth and psychological spirit as well. It just lifts you up that, that thing. Also, it gives you something to do. It does give you something to do. You've got to keep managing the fire, keep putting logs on, cutting logs. It warms you up making a fire, definitely. So there's a hot chocolate. Also, it's nice just to sit and look at a fire because it's changing constantly. And it's, it's just nice fiddling with a fire, you know? It's just the, the pi oh, here comes Brucey. It's the pyrotechnic in all of us. There's no way I'd be able to see him without his little light on. We'll see if he goes ar around. He might walk around behind. You might see him in a second. There he is. Hey, Brucey. What you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Hey? Have you heard the owl? <laughs> He's not so triggered by the red light anymore. He's just got used to it. When it was white, it triggered him. First time I did it red, it triggered him. But now he's he's pretty calm. He is looking at it though, because it does light stuff up so he can see clearly. So you see how he's doing that? Just lying down outside of the top in the rain. He doesn't care. And don't bother commenting saying, oh, you should bring him in, it's bad for him. This is just who he is. This is what he does. This is. He finds enjoyment from doing that. He's not a school kid. If that's what he wants to do, then I'm gonna let him do it. The only time I really want him to stay put is when it's bedtime, when we're asleep. Yeah, and that's harder to deal with when I'm in a hammock. Anyone who's um, been, you know, seen my other hammock video with him, uh, where I did two nights, I couldn't keep him in his bed at all. He was off just doing whatever he wanted to do. Um, even here, I had a hot tent here. I didn't have the stove in. He managed to crawl out under the hot tent, get out. I don't know, two o'clock in the morning? He was out all night, just lay outside of it, watching. And then he waited until I woke up and then he was just lying there. He just likes being outside. I mean, he obviously sleeps at some point, but what he usually does is he goes up to a tree, he finds the driest patch, digs away, makes a little bed, and curls up and hunkers down like Steve. And he's just happy, and that's what he likes doing. He, he likes making his own bed. So I've got all this stuff that I drag out for him. Uh, the blanket, the sleeping bag, everything else. He doesn't care for any of that, really doesn't. He'll use it, but... He knows, he knows how to make a dry bed and he knows where to go. <laughs> Plus his coat is really waterproof. He doesn't feel it. He doesn't seem to feel the cold. It's cold for me, but it's not cold for him by any stretch. It's, what is it now? Eight degrees centigrade? That's, that's nothing for him. I can hear the wind up above in the pines. It's kind of calm down here at the moment, but I've got a feeling, here it comes. Yeah. 
and it's the wind that it makes it colder. It just cuts through you. Wind breaks are fantastic if the wind is coming from one unique direction. Um, but up here, it isn't. It's just swirling. It's coming from all sorts of different directions, so that wouldn't help at all. The only thing that really helps is a tent <laughs> that you can seal up. Sit inside the tent. When it's really grim outside, a tent is where you want to be. Not a hammock, not in a bivvy bag under a tarp. You want to be in a tent. That hot chocolate went down very well. Oh. oh, I think, I think it's cigar time. I do. I feel like a cigar. A post meal cigar. And you know what I'll do is. I'll use this bag later. Put Bruce's steak in. There he goes. He's off exploring. That red light in the background, can you see him? <laughs> you probably know where he is better than I do. I think he's looking to see where that noise came from, which was the owl. He, he is used to them, he does hear them. Mm, good cigar. Someone asked me uh, to say what cigars I have. Again, I've got a box of Monte Cristo number four or five, I can't remember. The bigger of the two, whichever that is. And that's what this is. Now, I'll tell you what I have got to warm me up. Oh, hello, Brucey. You come to say hello? No? No. I see what I have got. That is absolutely delicious. Sorry about the smoke. I have to blow it that way next time. You know what I got in here? Tell you what, I'll give you 20 seconds to write a comment to say what, just have a guess what you think this is, what spirit. And I'm gonna have a sip of it. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hint. It smells spicy. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, that is so good. All right, everyone got the comments done? Guess what it is? Spicy, good hint. Rum, spiced rum. Uh, you can Google this one, it's called the Kraken. It's a lovely bottle. Uh, the Kraken Spiced Rum. It is absolutely delicious. Very delicious. Nectar. It's one of the tastiest rums I've ever had. And it's, it's almost like a dessert all by itself. vanilla -y, a lot of vanilla. If I didn't have the camera here with me, with you guys, then, oh. Ah, so, yes, my MacBook. I was gonna tell you why I've got my computer with me. But you know this now, because this video will be coming out afterwards. 
So I've got my MacBook with me because I'm going to do my very first live stream uh, tomorrow morning. I've never done a live stream before. I don't know why not. I just never really thought about it. And I thought, well, you know what? You're in lockdown. You can still go out camping, but it'd be nice to chat with people and just see how everyone's getting on. Now I know no one can actually talk, they'll, but they'll write comments. Hopefully ask me some questions. So it'll be interesting to see because this video comes out after the live stream. So <laughs> I hope it was a success. And if you watched it and you participated, I hope it was enjoyable. And I hope the signal was strong enough that it was a good enough signal. It's the very first time I've done it. Um, so fingers crossed it goes well. Uh, and thank you in advance if you're one of the people that participated in it and we had a good conversation. And the plan is to do it tomorrow morning, I think 8 a.m., uh, after I've made some pancakes and I've got a coffee on the go. Yeah, a pancake and coffee live stream chat. If it's, if it's uh, popular, if people like it and enjoyed it, um, I'll do it again um, from another setting. Outdoors though, yeah. All right, everybody. I've been yapping and yapping and yapping. And I've probably lost quite a few subscribers already with my rant and my discussions and my views. They are what they are. I'm just a normal person like you. As I said, it's been a horrible year. Um, last night, uh, so uh, my brother was left in the UK. My brother was in the UK when I came back here and he was with my dad when he passed. And my brother, boxed up some things to, and had them shipped back to New Zealand. And last night, uh, we went through those. He opened the boxes. He waited for me. Bless him. My brother, Jim. Cheers, Jim. Thanks for everything. You've been a good brother. I know you don't think you've been a good brother, but you have been a good brother. Cheers. And his kids, and he's probably watching this with Sophia, his little daughter and Fleur, his wife. Uh, anyway, he uh, unboxed, he waited for me and we unboxed it, he unboxed them. And we did it FaceTime, live stream. And honestly, I really wasn't that interested. <laughs> and he knows that. But then, uh, Then he uh, pulled out some pictures of my dad. Oh, my dad, he was so happy. It made me really think, I really miss him. Really miss my dad. He was always there to have a chat. Always there for me. <laughs> always. Most reliable person in the world. He really was. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. I seem to blub every time on one of these. It's just my dad. I was very close with him. And to not be there after being there for so long and to lose him, cut really deep. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. Just I'm flooding back. Gosh, every time I talk about him. If your dad's still alive, give him a hug. Really, give him a hug. <sighs> 
to all the uh, to all the dads, to all dads out there. <coughs> Sorry. There wasn't anything you wouldn't do for the family. And he loved us no matter what. And he was brilliant. He was a very honourable, very honourable man. Yep, miss him a lot. <laughs> My dad's name was Edward. Ed. Gosh, I'm gonna stop doing that. <sighs> Didn't expect that at all. Oh. <sighs> okay, sorry totally went on a tangent there and then ended up losing it all right I'm just gonna chill out a bit and uh, I think I'll come back to you when when we're ready for bed thanks everybody well I'm in bed if that's what you can call it. Quite possibly the most stressful the most stressful experience I've ever had trying to get into bed. Look, I am now sorted and very comfortable. Don't get me wrong. But getting in this thing, getting it just right, trying to get in a sleeping bag, forget it. What were they thinking? <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if they just gave a whole load of these away for people to review to get good comments. It, this is the most stupid thing I've ever had to get into in camping in my life. It's so difficult. Easiest being tent, you just lie down. Middle, hammock. You get, get in the hammock. You lie, you adjust yourself, fine. This, are you kidding? This is just ridiculous. There's so much you have to do. Getting in this thing, you look like an idiot. Fell on my ass, I think, three times, four times. Getting in the sleeping bag, forget it. I can't even get this thing around me. And um, because I'm top heavy, because I'm, I'm, I've got muscle, I, it just doesn't work. You've got to be slight of frame for this thing to work. Forget height. It's nothing to do with that. This thing is built for your average Joe. Whereas I'm very top heavy, muscly. And the second I push a bit too much weight back a bit, you know, I lie back a little bit just to fill the space up, the whole thing wants to tip up. Nah. And I haven't even attempted to put the bug net on yet, which I've got to zip all the way around my feet. What were they thinking? No, I don't recommend it at all. I'm probably going to have... I don't know. Am I going to have a good night's sleep? I don't know. I can't even get in my sleeping bag at the moment. Yeah, I can't even get in the sleeping bag. Now I wish I'd bought a quilt just to throw on top of me. Oh, man. This is a nightmare. Honestly, I could quit right now. I was fine up until this moment. I was having a great, 
sit there, you know, with the food and everything else. Now, I could quit. I could go home and get into bed. The thought of having to get out of this thing and get back in again, w w no way. I won't do it. I guarantee you I'm never using this thing again. This is ridiculous. Well, I, it's, a, it's a pointless invention. The hammock is fine. What they've done here... And I, start, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I just don't get it. it, it it's, am I not seeing the Emperor's new clothes? <sighs> what a waste of time this thing is. Okay, I'm off the floor. I'm comfortable if I get it exactly right. I'm just as comfortable on the floor. Honestly. In a tent. This is a lot of fabric for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And I don't understand it. I'm not, I'm not a convert. I'm sorry. I don't believe in this at all. Uh, hammocks, normal hammocks, I've been comfortable in. Easy to get in. Just sit in and that's it. You're done. This, too much palaver. Total, uh, it's just too difficult. There are a lot of videos out there, diehard Amok fans fine you know what you can keep it they're yours you're obviously experts at this you've got the right body type for it i don't this does not work for me it just doesn't i'm so top heavy i've got a lot of muscle up top and i'm so top heavy the second i fill this gap this thing wants to tip back i've got this thing pumped to the max it is incredible I, and there's so much material, I don't understand why. It's everywhere. Look at all this. And for what purpose? It will be comfortable, I'm sure, but getting in a sleeping bag, no chance. If I had a quilt, would it be better? Of course it would be better. But I still don't get it. It's massive. I don't understand. It takes up so much space. Um... When you're trying to sit down there under the tarp, this takes up a lot of space. I don't see the point. I'd rather have a tent and be totally protected. This does not make any sense to me at all. I can feel all the breeze coming through. I've got to now go around, zip all this up. I might as well have a tent. Oh, what was I thinking? I read, I saw all the YouTube videos on this thing. I thought, wow, that looks amazing. Nah. Not a convert. Hey, will I change my mind in the morning? I really doubt it. Because if I have to get up in the middle of the night, I'm going to be really annoyed. Because getting in this thing, it's crazy. Ridiculous. Nothing should have to be this awkward to get into. Oh, I'm sure there are tips and tricks to get into it. But well, I don't care. I want easy. I want luxury. I don't want hassle. I don't want to have to YouTube video something, you know, check something on YouTube to find out how to get in it. No. I'm going to try and get in the sleeping bag and I'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> I just, I'm so uncomfortable. Well, it's not that I'm uncomfortable. I'm actually comfortable if I find the exact right spot, but I daren't move after that. This is a horrible experience. No, I'm not a believer. I can, I'm so tempted to just go home. No, I'm gonna see this through. I'm gonna try and sleep in it. Well, I am gonna sleep in it tonight. I can't go home, I gotta do this. But well, I'm not happy. What am I missing that's so great about this? This just, there's so far, nothing seems good about this at all. You've still got to use a massive sleeping pad. The wind comes ripping through. You don't have the benefit of an underquilt wrapped around you. I would take a normal tarp over this any day. Can you hear the wind? I, uh, God forbid I try and put this fly mesh up, which might stop some of the wind. 
I don't think I could do it. I'll probably fall out. No, I'm just not sold. Sorry, I'm up. This is not for me. I'll take a normal hammock any day over this. That was torture. It was like a torture chamber trying to get in the sleeping bag. A quilt? Yeah, you just throw that on top. Maybe. Getting in was still ridiculous. Wow, I can't believe there are so many Amok fanboys out there. It just seems like a total a total waste of time. There's so much material. And it offers you no more protection than anything else. Uh, in fact, probably less. Because of the strange shape. And I'm just, yeah, just don't like it. No, not a fan at all. Will I sleep well? I doubt it, because I'm going to be worried about falling over. I, I, this thing makes it so top-heavy, it's crazy. Even when you adjust all the little fine-tuning, all the straps, I cannot get this thing to stop me from wanting to tip backwards. It's not designed for top-heavy guys. It isn't. If you're average, maybe, fine. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not average, and I don't want to be. And you can't, oh my God, the whole thing just bends in half when you try and get in your sleeping bag. Why even create this thing? I don't understand. What was wrong with a normal hammock? Nothing. All right, guys, <laughs> enough of this. I just can't be bothered anymore with it. I just want to go to sleep and this is driving me crazy. I, I'm so unhappy in this thing. I wasn't happy sitting in it, remember? I needed my chair. Well, now it's got actually no redeeming features whatsoever. All right, see you in the morning, everybody. Night, night. <sighs> morning. It's almost 4 a.m. It's just been drizzling all night. Tarp's held up well. Um, it's not leaking at all. But the hammock, that's a totally different story. It is awful. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. If you don't move and you just lie dead still, fine, you might pass out. But the second you try and move, you just slide around. I keep sliding down the bottom, no matter how many times I adjust these straps or whatever. And here's the other problem, it's soaking wet. These straps, everything is, is wet. You see it? The zip is wet down there. It's all wet because moisture is seeping through from the strap. Look at that. Now, it's coming through that rubber grommet bit. It, bit by bit, it is seeping through. It's not doing it that side so much. But it is getting wet still. It is still coming through a bit. I can only assume it's because of this toggle. Um, but there's, uh, there's no way to move that toggle out of the way completely. I mean, if it was windy, it's just going to blow back again. Uh, so, water is coming down through here. It's just, it's just wet. This rubber strap thing here on the end isn't doing anything. This is wet. This is, yeah, this is soaking up here. That's not doing the job. So the buckle is allowing quite a lot of moisture through here. And you can see the drips of water there. This one's not so bad, but now that one's actually dry. Yeah, this one's dry. So that one's working fine taking the water away but this one isn't I don't know why that is it's not immediately obvious I mean I could try and drop that down but I still don't think that would make much difference <laughs> try and move it well we'll see I don't know 
it's not obvious to me what's going wrong there. Somehow, it is coming, water is getting through there. There's sort of like a rubber protector here. It's meant to stop any moisture getting through, but it's saturated. Oh, so yeah, I don't know how long it's been doing that for, but this is all wet. These straps are wet. You can see in my hands. That's wet. The zip's wet down there. I mean, it's not getting to me. It's not reaching me, but yeah. Um, other notes, you can't have a pillow in this thing. It's impossible. It will not stay put. There's nothing to grip to. Ugh. So, I've just, I've, I've never had such a wrestle. I mean, I'm so restless in this thing. You've got to fine tune the hell out of this, I tell you. I've had to turn my sleeping bag into a quilt and just lay it on top of me because <laughs> there's just no chance. You can't sort yourself out in it at all. And then the second you feel all right, maybe you want to turn over, you've got to do everything all over again. And Oh, no, this isn't for me at all. In a normal hammock, you just get in the hammock and you're cocooned. It's, it's, you just lie there. That's it, that's all you can do in this. And I tell you what, getting in and out of this thing is such a palaver that uh, you don't wanna have to get up and go to the toilet. Because to try and get out of this and to put your shoes on in the middle of the night, nightmare, I would say, nightmare. No, never using this again. Just, it's just, it's just uh, a strange concept. It doesn't work for me at all. Probably works for a lot of other people. Fine. But not for me. No. All I'm seeing is just a waste of material, to be honest. Uh, and too overly, overly complicated for what I need. Once you do get comfy and you lie flat, fine, yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah, but I'm comfy now. But I'm not just gonna stay rigid like this. And the second I move, I slide a bit more and then slide a bit more. This material is so slippery. It just doesn't grip. I don't understand that. <laughs> Crazy. All right, I'm gonna try and go back to sleep. Well, it's five o'clock in the morning. And it's just getting worse. It's flooding, it's leaking. Look at that. It's a puddle. There was a puddle there a second ago. It's just drenched. Oh, there's just water pouring in. The strap is, is soaked. Look at this. Just everywhere you look, there's water droplets. Water there. Oh, I've put the mesh up um, just to block some of the breeze. Actually, that does a good job. Uh, but this is a major problem. It is. I mean, this is saturated. This is absolutely drenched. Look at this. So the side of my sleeping bag is wet now. Yeah, sleeping bag is wet. It's just been soaking it up. I'm trying to lean away from it, but it's impossible in this stupid thing. That is a major design flaw. Look at this. This is absolutely soaked. I could rinse that out. What a nightmare. Oh, just everything is wet. All from that one strap. It's not coming in the other side at all. Look. Other side's dry. Bone dry. Yep. So what is it, a, a design flaw with that one? I can see water trickling down this. Look at that. 
there's actually water trickling down the strap. I, I just can't fathom it. Why would that side let so much water in? Or any water in, for that matter? I've got a blooming puddle here. <sighs> this has just happened to me, honestly. I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get a whole load of comments saying I set it up wrong. Honestly, explain why that side isn't leaking, but that side is. There's a flaw, something wrong with that strap, the grommet, and it's just saturating through. <laughs> How do I end up with all the gear that just leaks in this crap? Same with that car tent. And I got a whole load of comments saying, oh, no, 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 you just did it wrong. Well, they took it back and gave me a full refund because they acknowledged there was a flaw in that one. Well, there's a massive floor in this one, and it is drenched. And that strap is letting everything in. It's just ridiculous. I've got to get up, because it's just, I can't sleep like this. All right, I'm giving up on this. This thing is absolute pants. I can't believe how soaked it is. All right, I'm gonna get up. Okay, I'm up. Right, so you can see the water droplets. Um, what's going on under here? Okay, so this is just not working. So the, the buckle, somehow, the buckle is transferring water to this strap. The rubber grommet thing here, all that's doing is compounding the problem. Uh, but it, there's, there's actually water coming here, soaking into this strap, and that has basically flowed all the way down here, which is what soaked everything in here. The other side, which is set up exactly the same way, no water is coming past the buckle. Um, it's all hitting the strap and dripping off. And nothing is getting past this rubber grommet. And this, this, this bit is actually bone dry. You can see it's dry. See that? So this one is, is I guess what's happening here is it's, it's just coming off this side. Whereas this one, There's the water droplet. It's soaking this strap here. Yeah, it's getting on the strap. And this strap is just letting all that water in. So this is, it, it's just feeding it. I, don't, I just don't understand how. It's, it's bizarre to me. And that's why there is water dripping all the way down. It's not coming from the tarp at all. The tarp is bone dry here, nothing at all. Nothing, it's all just coming down this strap. It's basically overwhelmed this strap and this cinch here. I mean, if there was a way to turn it sideways, then fine, but there isn't. You can see how wet that is. I mean, it's dripping. But this is absorbing it. This material, this bit here, is uh, absorbing the moisture. <laughs> you can see the color of it. It's dark. It's absolutely soaking. Look, you can squeeze the water out of it. So this strap is conducting water. <sighs> That's a design flaw. Huge design flaw. There's no way it should get past the buckle. And it's set up exactly as it should be before anyone questions it. Look at that. That's the way it's meant to be. Picture, toggle, picture, toggle. Wow. Look, I know I camp in the rain a lot and stuff and I do put things through their paces, but this is not heavy rain. And now all my stuff is my sleeping bag is wet. 
Oh, man. I just... Oh, and by the way, the tarp has started to leak slightly. There's some ingress there. See? Don't know if you can make that out here. That water. But as I said, it does say... It, it does come with seam sealant. You can seam seal it on the outside. So at least they give you the seam sealant uh, to fix that. Um, and I did bring some with me, but it's not bad. It's not dripping or anything. It's just, I can just see it in there. There's moisture in there. Yeah. But this, oh my word. So these water droplets, they're coming from, um, yeah, just being overwhelmed. I think there was a puddle here. It's probably a puddle at the bottom of the bed, but my sleeping bag has soaked it all up. Oh no, there is a puddle. There you go. Yeah, there's a puddle. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> it's just camping with Tony. I don't know where Bruce is. He's been playing all night. He hasn't been on his bed. He has got my hat over here. He's taken his sleeping bag. He's tossed that over there in the rain. <laughs> He's... Bruce, where are you? <whistles> Let's see where he is. I've heard him. Oh, there he is. Hello. Have you been out all night? Oh, no. He is so happy. This is wild Bruce. <sighs> all right, everyone. <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pack this hammock up and just sit out here under the tarp. Because this is just, this is a waste of time, this hammock. Awful. <sighs> and I said it was so well made. But that, what a design flaw, honestly. I've got to, I've got to send this video to Amok and show them because this is a major problem. It really is a major problem. I don't know how they could, how they could get that so wrong, that buckle system, and how they could get this so wrong. This material is just a sponge. Have they, have they stitched the wrong material onto here on this side and not the other side? And how come the buckle is transferring so much moisture? It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's just not adding up to me how this one is just so vastly different to the other side. And yet the, the, the straps are both equally wet. This is, this is sopping as well, look. That's, that's wet, soaking. Is it because that's at an angle? I just don't know. I do not know what is going on with this system. But this is sopping, it's just dripping off. So that's that's working fine. This is bone dry. Nothing getting on the buckle at all. And yet this is absolutely drenched and the buckle is soaked. Someone has to explain that to me, how that is happening. Yeah, I can't, I just, I'm at a loss, I really am at a loss for how to uh, stop that from happening. So I will send that, send this video to Amok and explain. And it's it's under the tarp, it's, it's not exposed. This isn't exposed at all. It's, I've got a long way, there's a, at least a foot distance there, at least. <sighs> okay, you know what, I need a coffee. I'm going to put a brew on. And I'll come back to you later after I've packed my hammock away. <laughs> just just about to put my sleeping bag away. Look at the bottom of it. Can you make that out? It's That's why there's no puddle. It's all soaked into the bottom of my sleeping bag. It's absolutely drenched at the bottom. <sighs> Welcome back. some water on. Put a bit more in there actually. I am so tired. So tired. That, that was a rubbish night. <laughs> I mean I don't know what I was expecting but um, 
something better than that. I've taken the hammock down completely, giving myself a lot more space here now. <sighs> what a disappointment. I mean, the two separate issues here. One is that uh, the hammock is just awkward. It is, it's not easy. It's not simple, you know, and um, I like easy. I don't want to have to read instructions to use something. If you can't figure it out, you know, then it's, it's overly complicated. But that, even with all the fine tuning, all of the adjustments, you could just get it right where you were very, very comfortable if you just lay still, just get it right. But then you turn around or you move or you pillow, you, you can't have a pillow in that thing. It just doesn't stay put. And if you're not completely flat, you do end up sliding down the hammock. I don't see the point in that. I just was constantly having to pull myself up again. Um, even if I pulled the straps to lift the end up a bit to sort of stop me from doing that, uh, then it wasn't comfortable to lie on. I don't know. I've seen so many reviews of that hammock and they all loved it. Oh, best night's sleep they've ever had. Some guys swear by them. I don't know what the difference is. I, I, I just... I don't see what the big thing about it is. I, a normal hammock is so much easier. It's so much easier to get in. I mean, you have to fall out of the hammock. Unless you're gonna do all the strap adjustments and try and sit up bit by bit. It's just, <laughs> oh dear. And then there's the leaking. Oh my word, well, that's just shocking. That's just shocking. That's completely, completely unacceptable. My sleeping bag was absolutely drenched at the foot box. Absolutely drenched. You know what I might do? I might switch this light round because I think that's going to be annoying you. Bruce is out there somewhere going ballistic. I don't think he slept all night. He's just having such a great time. Boy, do I need this. to use the light from the camera so I can see. So there should be no grinds coming out at all. I can't see any grinds coming out. And that is cowboy coffee. Oh, I need, I need this. Mmm. Oh yeah. That's good. Oh gosh. It probably makes for good viewing, um, but it, it makes for disastrous camping, I tell you. I hope um, <clears throat> people who do go out camping and want to go out camping in the rain do learn some things from these videos. Um, I do push stuff. I don't test things at home first and then bring it out. And, and the reason I don't do that is for you guys. I want you to see what it's like when you take things out and you don't test it first. You know, <clears throat> if I did that, well, A, you've got to time it to get the weather. Uh, believe it or not, where I live, it doesn't always rain. It's just when it does, I can camp in it and do a video in it. But it's mainly sunny here. Um, so I can't really test it that easily. And sometimes you just, you just got to get going. You, stuff arrives and you need to go. So as long as you open it and check that all the components are there, usually that's the most important bit. But actually testing gear, like some, you know, people have mentioned to me, oh, you should have tested that car tent. How? When? I didn't have the space available to do that. And that thing weighed 40 kilos, something like that. What was it, 30 kilos? 
Actually, I can't remember how much it weighed. It was huge. I just didn't have the chance to test it. And even then, I what are you going to do? Spray the whole thing down with a hose constantly to see if it leaks? <clears throat> you just sort of trust the manufacturer. You trust their word. <coughs> and, um, yeah, trust is a hard thing to come by. Because so many of the manufacturers BS all the time. And they don't test the gear themselves. Uh, quality control is non-existent these days, it seems. Bruce. Settle down. Uh, you've got yourself tangled on haven't you? Bruce has got himself tangled on my tarp. And he knows he has. Stop, 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 stop. Hold on. What have you done? Oh, you've garroted yourself on this thing. There. Go and lie down. Honestly. Oh, God, he's off again. <laughs> he's just... He will not settle now. He is up. He is awake. He knows it's morning. And he is happy. This is Bruce. Manic. Manic. Bruce. This is what he does. This is what he's like. 24-7. <laughs> Unless he's in the house. This is just what he's always like. He doesn't have an off switch when he's outside. Sorry, I'm just moving my water bottle. Oh. Yeah, so I test gear. <laughs> so that you don't have to test it. It will be interesting to see what Amok come back with uh, about that, what their response will be. See, that's the other thing is you can judge a company by its response. Some of them are fantastic. They give great responses. Others just uh, completely ignore you. And some just go uh, in denial and say, you did it wrong. It's your fault, idiot. <laughs> what will they say about this? because it's hard to deny that there seems to be a flaw in one side of the strap when the other side didn't leak. And uh, from what I can see, I didn't do anything wrong. It's not my fault. Yeah. I don't see any other way you can do it either. I mean, if you used a different brand of tree strap, I suppose you could carabiner it, but then I don't think those buckles are designed to be used like that. I think they could break if you put a carabiner on the end of that buckle. So yeah, tent is the best way to go. Uh, with a tarp as well, so you can sit out and enjoy everything that's going on around you. Because sitting in a tent is no fun, it really isn't. Um, yeah, that's quite naff. And then I'd say second uh, is a proper hammock. Is, is it? Yes. Yeah. A proper hammock. That would be second with a really good big tarp. And again, you camp chair. <laughs> Third, then would be bivy under a tarp. I mean, I'll be honest, bivy really is your last resort. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not, it's, it, it just, it, oh, it can, if the weather's nice, it can be great. But if it's raining, nah, you don't want to be on the floor in a bivy. There's nowhere to put anything. You definitely would have to have a tarp over you because everything would be drenched. There's no way you could keep the rain out. You just couldn't. Um, but yeah, everything would be soaked. So you'd have to have a tarp. And then I guess, yeah, so bivy with a tarp, third, and then fourth, the least appealing 
is just a top shelter with a sleeping bag and a pad without a bivy bag i've 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 had a few tarp shelters i've done it a few times and the space that you gain from it is misleading because the discomfort when things go wrong is extreme there are videos everywhere of, of people who have camped under a tarp uh, where it's gone wrong and it's awful like heavy rain seeping through the ground because you've got no footprint um wind oh rips through the top it just comes straight through the front door yeah very little you can do to keep that out i mean you can do some really elaborate tarp designs but it's such a faff you may as well just have a tent um insects all sorts of things so uh, that's my least favorite option in bad weather yeah i think even hot tents Hot tents really are meant to be used in snow, ice conditions, not rain. Rain gets in everywhere, it just does. Yeah. You've got to have a really good setup if you're going to camp in the rain a lot. It finds a way in. Unless you've got, as I say, a really good tent and tarp set up. And believe me, I am an expert at camping in the rain. I All rain conditions. <laughs> And I know what's required. I know that I know the absolute perfect gear to have. I could, I could come out every single time and have a perfect camp if I wanted to. The exact right gear. Yep, I know exactly what's required. I've got bulletproof gear that will do it, no problem at all. But I choose not to do that because I want to test it, test other stuff for you guys. And for me, just out of my curiosity, has anyone made a decent product, a different product? You've got to keep trying these things. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I do know that my MSR Hubba Hubba tent, it's a Hubba Hubba NX2, with a footprint and a tarp over top, I'm golden. Protected from the wind, uh, and I've had, that thing's been out in serious wind, it's been out in heavy snow, and it's been out in torrential rain, really bad rain. And I've been bone dry inside, bone dry. Um, it's got vertical walls at the end, which I love, it means your sleeping bag doesn't touch the outside, you don't get wet. Just bone dry. It's never failed me. So, and I've got all the Hilberg stuff and everything else, and, and they've got their problems. Yeah, the Hilleberg Una is a condensation trap. I'll be honest, the Hilleberg Una, a, a few videos ago, I did a camping in the in rain and snow. And the condensation was awful in that tent. Really bad, probably the worst of any tent I've tried. Uh, it just didn't vent. I tried everything. Um, so in those conditions, I would not use an Una, but then I camped by a river and I left the front door completely wide open because I could, because there was no snow or anything, uh, and the top, and there was no condensation. So go figure. It's just about venting. It's all about condensation. And in the snow and wet, those are the trickiest conditions. And, um, my MSR... Yeah, that vents very well because it's not a four season tent. So it vents really well. Four season tents don't vent. Saying that my Hilberg Steiker, I have also had that out in some very wet, horrible conditions. That has uh, fantastic ventilation, but it's a heavy, big, cumbersome tent. And it's a real pain setting up and uh, disassembling, taking down that tent. There's got to be 2,000 clips. <laughs> There's a lot of clips. And um, if they froze, oh, you'd be there forever undoing them. You really would. You'd be breathing on every single clip. <laughs> but it is a bulletproof tent. If, it, if I thought there was really horrid conditions, like heavy, heavy wind, that sort of stuff, 
heavy snow loading, then that tent, yeah, it's bulletproof. And it, it does have very good ventilation. I can't remember if I had condensation in that tent. I don't think I did, but I did touch the edges. My sleeping bag was pushing against the edge. Uh, Cause again, it's not vertical like the MSR inside. It's like that. Which is, again, it was disappointing. So yeah, not everything, not every tent is perfect for every kitchen, but uh, my MS, can you see Brucey behind me? I don't know if you can make him out. But the MSR, now saying that, I've got, my one is a few years old. The new ones for MSR use a new method of seam sealing, uh, which apparently is awful. I think it's the most complained about tent now there is because of the stitching that they do. And they've stopped seam sealing. Now, the reason they stopped seam sealing is because of the cost, the time it takes to do it. So now I think they actually send you the tent and they give you the option of seam sealing it yourself. They give you the sealant. Come on, that's not right. So yeah, maybe I need to get my hands on another MSR, a new one and see how it fares. See if it leaks in heavy rain or not. That I would test. That I would put out in a rainstorm and just leave it and see if it leaks because you don't want to be in a tent that's leaking. That's the end of your trip. Yeah, because you'll probably wake up in a puddle and then you just got to get out of there. Just like this, like the Amok. I had to take it down. If that had happened at one o'clock in the morning, what would I have done? Luckily, it didn't get really, you know, the seepage didn't really start until I think four. And yeah, I've had to pack it away. It's, you can't stay in it. The sleeping bag was soaked. This isn't a rant, this is a chat. <laughs> what time is it? It's quarter past six. Right. I'm doing a live stream at 8 a.m. and it's quarter past six now. This is gonna be an interesting live stream. Uh, and of course you're all gonna know how it went because this video is gonna come out after the live stream. What do I say? Do I fess up of what's happened or do I save it all for the video? I guess you will find out. All right, I'm just gonna relax now. Drink my coffee, wait for the sun to come up. <laughs> and get ready for the live stream. Because there's nothing, nothing. I, you know what I could do is I could just put the I could just reinflate the sleeping pad, put it on the floor, get my sleeping bag, get in it, and try and get an hour's sleep. But I'm awake now and I've had a coffee. I doubt I will do that. Also, my sleeping bag is wet. No, I just gotta suck it up. All right, I'll come back to you later. So there's my setup. <laughs> Got a cool colored tarp. I see Brucey lying there. And from a distance, from a distance, you really, it does blend in. Yeah. I mean, it's wet, so it's shiny now. Um, yeah, so that's, I do like the, the camera pattern. Oh, I just hate the guy lines that you can't see them. Impossible to see. Look at that. Can you even make out that there's a guy line right in front of you there? There. See, you can't even see it. Crazy. Stupid color. I would take all these off and redo them with an orange paracord. Very thin paracord, obviously. Let me move through here and show you what I'm doing. See, there's mine. You can see mine clearly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know it's if you're trying to be stealthy, then you probably don't want orange. But tripping over the guy lines is crazy, uh, and I've tripped over them so many times. 
I use orange because I can see it. Yeah, it's a good setup. You can see I've taken the hammock down uh, to give myself more room and also it was just pointless. It was just getting drenched. Yeah, so all my stuff is in a pile down there. Yeah, there's my table with the bent leg <laughs> from my accident. So I'm just getting ready to uh, cook up some pancakes and some coffee. Uh, I will come back for that. Going to put my coffee on. Actually, what I'll do is I might do my. I've had a couple of coffees. I might do my pancakes. Uh, no, I'll do a quick coffee, then I'll do pancakes. Yeah, it's time has ticked on now. I think it's coming up to half seven in the morning. Oh, 07 30. Um, yeah, coffee made me feel much better. <laughs> I was feeling pretty down earlier when that all went wrong. What a nightmare everything has been. Yeah, I was feeling a bit, bit deflated, cold and everything after that and tired. It was just a rubbish night. Oh dear. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do. <laughs> Pancake mix. Ah, and I have to go in it this time. I bought some... What did I bring with me? Ah, yes, so we're going to need a few things. We're going to need oil. I'm going to need maple syrup. And... I've got an egg because it was much better with the egg last time. <sighs> oh dear. One of these, I mean, would you rather my camping trips went well? <laughs> or would you rather see it like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? I just despair at what's going on with the equipment. Uh, okay. And spilling food and all sorts all over the place. Uh, that too. Okay, the egg goes in. Now, I think the theory behind it is the fat and everything just makes it more fluffy. I'm not sure. And you could put milk in there as well, milk and egg. I just didn't bring any milk. How's my flame? Flame on. Okay. Yeah, I was chilling. I actually watched... Uh, I was watching some YouTube. While I was up there, just... And Corporal's Corner. Sean, Corporal Sean Kelly. Just put out a new video. Amazing skills that guy's got, and uh, his perseverance. He uh, put out a new video, you should watch it. Uh, he made a hammock um, from, <laughs> from some wood, a bushcraft hammock. It looked really comfy, and I tell you what, it was a hell, probably a hell of a lot more comfortable and more uh, waterproof than my stupid Amok fail. Yeah, so a big shout out to him, because that was entertaining. I really enjoyed that. Although, he, he had a chat at the end. I love the, the chats he has, but it sounds to me like he was hinting that he's gonna stop doing his channel, stop doing his bushcraft. I hope he doesn't. I hope he's just, if anything, just takes a little bit of downtime to uh, contemplate. But yeah, I hope he doesn't stop because I think a lot of people really enjoy his channel. I do. But I can understand, he puts a lot of time and effort in, and if, if, if he feels that 
not enough people are watching, then I guess he thinks, well, what's the point? He could be doing something else. I think he was going to go back to school. So that's good. That's a good move. More education. Can't help. Can't hurt, I mean. Can't help. Can't hurt. He was talking about archaeology. And he was talking about doing a... a what was he going to finish? His bachelor's. And he was talking about doing a... A doctorate as well. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, you've got to make money. You've got to make money to live. YouTube isn't meant to be, for most people, their primary source of income. You know, a lot of YouTubers um, wouldn't make enough to survive from it. They have to, it's, it's supplemental, I think, for, for most YouTubers. Yeah. Unless you're someone like a top tuber, uh, like PewDiePie or Mr. Beast or Casey Neistat, some you know people like that. So yeah, okay. What I'm going to do is this is all going to take a while. I'll come back to you just as I'm putting my pancakes in the pan. I need to put. So let's hope I don't knock my pancake my my, my uh, pan over this time. All right, so how are we looking at it? Yep, that's good. Ah, <sighs> okay. Coffee. I'm just going to add a little bit of cold water just to get the grains to drop. I mean, you literally just sprinkle the water on. And you just leave it, let them, let the grain, let the uh, grinds fall to the bottom. Okay, now be careful this time. Don't knock the pan. All right, let's get the oil on. I want to just put it at a slight angle. Just got to get it right. Okay. Brucey is lying down by a tree, hunkered down like Steve, not moving at all. Just looking out, happy. I think he was just having a snooze then. He just heard his name, so he's woken up. Okay. I want to get this pretty hot. For my pancakes. Okay. All right. Let's see how this is. And as you know, I like my pancakes big. Oh yeah. Big pancake. All right, let's make sure it's level. I don't want it all going to one side, which it is doing at the moment. That's better. All right, the pancakes are in. A bit lumpy. Not so bad though. Let's have a coffee. No grinds again, perfect. Awesome. Right. I pat my bowl.
looking good. We're ready for a decent pancake for a change. Well, my last ones have been, actually, I can't remember. Was my last one good? Don't know. Yeah, I think it was. I can't remember when I last did the pancake. I didn't do it on the, oh, I must have done it up in the snow. Oh no, I did it by the river. That's right. Yeah, that was my last one, by the river. Oh, that was a good pancake. Yeah. This looks like it's gonna come out really well as well. Turn this around a bit, get some extra heat on this side. There you go. Ah, <laughs> it's just, I'm so tired. So tired. Bruce is having such a good time over there. Oh, he's just disappearing into the bush. Yeah, so tired and I am hungry. Even though that was a massive meal last night, I'm hungry now, probably because I've just been awake for so long. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. The rain seems to have died down. It's now, I don't even know if it is actually raining or if this is just coming off the trees. I can't tell. Oh, somebody's, somebody's come over to say hello. Ah, 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 no, not my bowl. <laughs> Cheeky. All right, I think it's time to turn. Turn the pancake over, I think. Let's have a look. Definitely. Ah, has it stuck a little bit? Oh no. <laughs> no, it can't have. Oh, it hasn't, okay. I was gonna say, but I might have just burnt that slightly. Okay, you know what, I've gotta try flip. I don't know if you can flip with this pan. Okay. Is this going to be a disaster? Yeah, <laughs> got it. All right. Oh, it's a little bit, a little bit, tiny bit burnt. I was chatting, I was yapping too much. But I tell you what, I like the crispy bits. So that suits me just fine. It's only going to take a minute on this side. Oops. Don't lose the pancake for God's sake. Please don't lose the pancake. <sighs> it looks like it's going to be perfect pancake. I've got my maple syrup. I might have to put two, two of these on because this is a really big pancake. It's going to suck up all of that maple syrup. All right, that must be good to go now. Eat my lid. Yeah. Bits of that rubber have come out. All right. Perfect pancake. Oh, come on. Look at that. Tony's got it. Perfect pancake. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, time for the maple syrup. Oh yeah. Definitely two, definitely. One is not gonna be enough. Oh. Excellent. All right. 
mate, I've got to tuck in. I was going to have bacon as well, but again, I just had so much meat last night that I just don't feel like the bacon. Can't explain it. Right, bon appetit everybody. Bon appetit. Thanks for coming along on this. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed it. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. Okay. That's so good. Okay, what I'm going to do is, because I need to chill and not talk, I'm going to have my pancake, have my coffee. I'll come back to you later. Oh, welcome back everybody. Oh. So I had my pancake and coffee and actually did a live stream just then, which went on a lot longer than I thought it would. It was over an hour, over an hour. Some fantastic questions and uh, donations and things like that. Thank you very much to everyone who watched and especially to those who contributed as well. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and, and, and joined in. Said hello to everyone, it's amazing. But I am tired. I need to pack up and I need to get home. So, uh, the plan is, I don't know where Bruce is. <whistles> the, the goats keep bleating from across the valley and it's triggering Bruce. <whistles> Bruce, come on. <whistles> You'll probably see him before I do. He might come charging up behind me. Bruce! <laughs> he goes so far away and then comes bounding back. Never lost him. <laughs> he always comes back. He doesn't get too far. He's got some water here as well, which he's probably going to need. I don't know where he is. Right. I need to... Oh, there he is. Hello, Brucey. Do you want some water? Nope, he wants to clean the pans again. Um, I need Bruce. Oh, look at him. He's so funny. Do you know, he's been out all night. The second I went to sleep, he disappeared. Bruce, what are you doing? Come on, out of there, out of there. That's the meat tray. Yeah, the second I went to sleep, he disappeared. You dumb? Second I went to sleep, he disappeared. No, no, Bruce, out of there, out of there. Come on, you've had enough now, you've had enough. Go on, go away, go away. And uh, from what I could gather, he, he made a little bed over here by a tree, just so he could look out. He probably did sleep some of the time, but it's just what he does, he just loves it. He'll make up for it, he'll sleep well today. And he's such a mess. Sorry, Anne. He's filthy. He's only got white at the top now, but the rest of him is brown. Pretty grim. Pretty grim. Okay, I'm going to pack up and head out. So I'll come back to you when we're all packed up. <laughs>
Paracord. <sighs> right. <laughs> I think that's everything. Just got the camera to pack away, and that'll be it. Oh, hey, Brucey. Come on, Bruce. Oh, there you are. Come here. Come sit down. Wait here. Well, thank you everyone for coming on this. It's been great having you along, even though it was another disastrous camping trip. Hey, come here. You are a mess. You've got to say goodbye to everyone. Um, please, if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you want to buy us a coffee or a treat, there's a link there to buymeacoffee.com. Isn't there, Brucey? Hey, um, it's locked down. You know, got to make the most of uh, this time to, to get out there. And again, I'm just around the corner from my house. I've just got to go up there and then back down to the house. Um, it's just two minutes away and this is our land. So it's all good. Um, but I hope everyone's getting through this. I, I know it's a struggle. I know it's tough times and New Zealand's had it good for so long. Um, we'll get it back again. Uh, where we can do what we need to do and get out there. So sending a lot of love to everyone, all the subscribers, all the fans. If you watched the live stream, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you missed it and you want to see it, the video is there. I think it's an hour long. There's some great questions. I answer a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So if you want to get to know me or Bruce or learn more about Anne, then look at the live stream and uh, yeah, you'll learn a lot about us. Bruce, where have you gone? Where did Bruce go? There you are. Come on then, come and say goodbye. All right, thanks again, everybody. We're gonna go home. Bruce, he's already going home. We're gonna go home, see mummy, yeah. All right, thanks again, everyone. Catch you next time.